Hello, Woodland Joint Unified Middle School teachers. My name is Electron Tom, and I'm so excited to share with you Amplify Science for California for grades six through eight. But let's jump right in. Imagine your students getting to interact with some really cool experiments. So here I have some chemicals that I'm gonna to mix together. We have some phenol red, baking soda, and calcium chloride. And this is to develop the sense of sense making around modeling with this activity. Immediately, I see this really cool chemical reaction happening. I'm producing some carbon dioxide bubbles. I'm feeling the heat and the gas is expanding the bag. And what is the purpose of this investigation? It all ties to our amazing unit structure and phenomenon. And so let me explore that a little bit further with you. With every unit, Amplify Science students get to take on these amazing roles as scientists and engineers, such as forensic meteorologists, chemists, planetary geologists looking at the surface of Mars and how those channels form, or microbiome researchers looking at a fecal gut transplant. But this experiment I just performed for you comes from our metabolism unit, where students are learning about the processes of energy production in cells while they're diagnosing a patient who is chronically exhausted, and that's our anchoring phenomenon. My agenda in this quick video includes a program overview of program components, talking about all these amazing resources you get to teach with as well as students get to learn from. And then along the way, embed Amplify Science's amazing and unique approach to learning. Now, as a teacher myself, I think it's very important to get some important criteria listed up front. Amplify Science has a fully bilingual print and digital program. So Spanish and English resources. So if I'm using my unit question, chapter question, and all these amazing things that come in our material kits, you can also get these in Espanol. Thinking of ease of use, hands-on setup with these materials takes about five minutes. We also include a slide deck for every lesson. It's a clickable lesson plan available in English and Spanish, and it is editable in both Google and PowerPoint versions. We have a video of a teacher teaching every lesson. I think that's so important, a real human teaching the lesson in a video. So many great uses for that. And then also a video of every hands-on investigation. These are another ways that we can provide access for our learners. Our phenomena-driven unit structure is built around NGSS, and we have a mix of inquiry with journaling and exploration called Do, Talk, Read, Write, Visualize. And we're gonna go a little bit further into that. But why are people choosing Amplify Science? Well, we are a proven program with proven results, and I'll show you what I mean. Also, we take phenomena seriously. We are a true phenomena-based program where students get to explore this role of scientists or engineers. And then finally, we have this amazing 21st century technology with our simulations and modeling tools that really set us apart. So now let's talk about those proven results. Of course, we're highly rated on ed reports, but we have an independent study that proved that you can move your students up to 14 percentile points in a year using our Amplify Science program in middle school. West Ed did an independent review study during the pandemic when we had the most challenging teaching and learning times, and they found that students scored 7.3% higher on end of study assessments compared to the control group of what they were using before. What does that mean? That means that 14 percentile point gain on science at the end of the year. Amazing results. Now I wanna go a little bit further into how we make that happen. One of the reasons for our success is very clear. We're truly built for three-dimensional learning. The Lawrence Hall of Science went to work creating Amplify Science after the new standards were finalized. Therefore, we're not a retrofitted program. We were designed for true three-dimensional learning. The three-dimensional learning is evident in these problem-based deep dives that students are going to explore as they take on the role of a scientist or engineer to figure out and solve phenomenal real-world problems through this engaging three-dimensional storyline and also the college and career-ready science roles they get to play, like I mentioned before, such as forensic meteorologists and microbiome researchers or our medical school interns working to learn body systems and cellular function and energy production, all while figuring out why Elisa here is exhausted all the time. Now let's explore our units and our unique scope and sequence for California. Each grade level has nine units for a total of 145 lessons. Each lesson is 45 minutes of instruction. We start the school year off by teaching a launch unit such as microbiome, geology on Mars, or harnessing human energy. So what is a launch unit? A launch unit is designed to introduce the norms, routines, and practices that we want students to accomplish as they embark on this new way of learning. We start by introducing interactive, meaningful reading of informational text. The text exists as science articles in both print and digital formats. 
let's take a look at the digital format for some great interactive features. The digital text is organized in a way that works for our learners with great visuals as well as a read aloud function. Cellular respiration. You may have heard the word respiration to refer to breathing air, taking oxygen into your lungs and releasing carbon dioxide through your mouth and nose. In our launch unit, students will learn interactive strategies and how to interact with the keywords, as well as make their own notes and annotations about the evidence they're finding from the text and submitting that to their teacher. We also have the ability for students to see all their work, their annotations, as well as change the settings. This can accommodate students with dyslexia or dysgraphia as they can expand the letter spacing and the text size. We also want to make that access for Espanol by clicking the toggle and you will see here the audio. Respiración celular. En la vida diaria, usamos la palabra respiración para hablar de respiración. So interacting with text is something that's very important in our program, and this is introduced in our launch units. Launch units also introduce our students to the amazing Amplify Science technology, such as our simulations. So let's take a look at some simulations. Here we are in our traits and reproduction simulation. All simulations have the Spanish toggle. I'm going to take Greg here and mate with Zora. The goal is to create a spider silk to replace a torn tendon in the human body. This is real research. Students will work through the visualization process. We can randomly fertilize. Students will be given guided inquiry tasks to complete the simulation, but there's this open-endedness to the world that they get to explore. We have different traits at the top. Greg was low and Zora was high for silk flexibility. My offspring came out medium or low. That's great. If not, I can go back and do a different breeding, a different crossing. Let's go deeper into the cell. These pink shapes are the proteins responsible for that trait. If I change the trait, the protein shape changes drastically. Students can make that visual connection that each protein is responsible for the trait they see in the living organism. So this is the depth of understanding our simulations allow our students to get to. Now let's take a peek at our metabolism simulation. We also have that English and Spanish toggle, and we have different settings for students to explore. We're gonna stick with the healthy body so we know exactly what a body needs to function properly. We can increase the activity levels, add food, which drops into the digestive system. And then it breaks down into the different macromolecules that can be traced throughout the different body systems. We can see the circulatory system moving around the different macromolecules. I see some oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange happening. We essentially can zoom in on the mitochondria, those little powerhouses of the cell, and that energy production that is happening there. Students will work with the graph function and do time test checking the diet exercise activities of our patient as they work to diagnose her condition of why she's exhausted all the time. Now let's explore our core units and our amazing engineering internships. The bulk of the units are core units, such as metabolism, plate motion, and force in motion. Twice a year, students will embark on amazing engineering internships such as metabolism, plate motion, and force motion that follow the core unit of the same name. Let's take a deeper look into the force in motion engineering internship in this internship, students are going to get a request for proposal, an RFP, from our Futura Engineering Organization. Their goal as mechanical engineering interns is to design delivery pods containing essential supplies for an area that went through a natural disaster. Now, over the course of 10 days, students are going to embark on these amazing ways in which they can solve this problem. I'm a big fan of the egg drop. And so you'll see here in day two, students will design a physical egg drop. I named mine Humpty and Humpty wasn't so successful. So day three, they redesigned their egg drop. And the goal is to learn about how to protect that cargo, such as an egg, from falling. Then we introduce our digital supply tool. Here in our digital supply tool, students have to apply what they learn from their hands-on investigations with a real world budget. We're gonna go with some steel for our shell, use some airbags, we're going to try to keep the cost low as we balance the criteria that we have. We're going to go with flaps that are $250 and with the $100 flown blocks on the bottom. Students will record their, co their cost and the mass and then drop it from the helicopter. You can see here we have a lot of cargo damage and high impact forces. Students can redesign and edit and they're going to do at least eight iterative tests, such as maybe spending $1,000 on a parachute. Will that make a difference? And it did. We now have less cargo damage, but 
Is that the best choices they can make? Students will have real world conversations about how much money they can spend on how many pods they can actually deliver. Now that we explore the three different unit types, let's take a deeper look at the true phenomena based approach of Amplify Science. We're going to take the disciplinary core ideas of earth life and physical and engineering and bring in those eight science and engineering practices, those action items of what we want students to accomplish, and then develop their thinking around the cross cutting concepts as it all relates to an anchoring phenomenon such as a Lisa or exhausted patient. We provide evidence of this for teachers through our teacher guides, both in print and digital format, where you'll see three dimensional statements that are color coded with the three dimensions. Also down at a lesson level, these become more succinct and many of our users create an I can statement for our students. When we think about our students, we want to make sure they all have access points for learning. So Amplify Science units are designed around progress builds. This is a progress build example from metabolism. You're going to start the unit with a pre-unit assessment. If you give this assessment digitally, it will auto score the multiple choice for you. And you'll also have two written responses with rubrics and possible student answers to score as well. You'll find that most of your students might score a progress build zero, but there's no need to panic. We're going to start simple. Progress build level one means that cells in the body need molecules from the outside. Students know they need to eat and they know they need to breathe. We're going to tap into that inherent knowledge and then we're going to build upon it. Progress build level two takes us into systems and how those systems work together to bring those molecules to our cells. At this point, you're going to pause and give a mid unit checkpoint called a critical juncture assessment. The results from the critical juncture assessment will group your students into three differentiated levels. Our green group is at level one. Our blue group is at level two and our purple group is at level three and has gone past where we expected them to be. The entire lesson that follows this critical juncture assessment is pushed out with either scaffolded supports or enrichment based upon what the students outcomes were on the critical juncture assessment. Once we're secure that all students are now able to move forward, we go into progress build level three, where cells release energy to function. At the end of the unit, there's also a cumulative assessment, which allows you to generate some great reporting features showing growth over time and even question analysis. The critical juncture assessment provides unit level differentiation. But keep in mind, we have lesson specific differentiation included with every single lesson. These include embedded supports for diverse learners, any potential challenges in the lesson, specific strategies for English learners, strategies for those students who need more support in general, and of course, strategies for students who need more challenge. Let's explore all the assessments within the program. We start with that pre-unit assessment, and then we have our critical juncture, which is that combination of multiple choice and written responses. Every chapter, we have a self-assessment for students to share how their learning is going. Included in the activities within a lesson, you will find on the fly formative quick checks. These are great because they provide you what to look for when the students are completing a three dimensional task and then how to make the modification with the now what if students are having any difficulties. At the end of the unit, we have a combination of summative assessments with multiple choice and written responses. We also include standard based benchmark assessments because we know that students preparing for the cast exam is very important. We include three pre-made per grade level of the benchmark assessments. The depth of knowledge of these items are all level two or three. Let's review our successful learning approach. We hook students with that real world problem with our anchoring phenomenon. And then we're going to explore evidence from multiple sources as we develop complex explanations. That is done through the do talk, read, write, visualize approach, which has proven very effective for multimodal learning. Do means students will be doing hands on investigations to gather firsthand evidence. Talking is very important in science, so we provide meaningful communication strategies through eight embedded discourse routines. Those discourse routines are in the lessons, but also embedded in the slide decks themselves. Students will read from the interactive text or the print version to gather even more evidence and then write their findings and conclusions in our graphic organizers in our student investigation notebooks, or you have the option for them to complete their work digitally and submit it to the teacher. Visualization happens with digital tools, the simulations, multimedia, and so much more to bring this learning cycle home for all learners. Do Talk, Read, Write, Visualize has data to support that it addresses the needs of all the learners in your classroom.
Once students are able to construct their inc increasingly complex explanations, we then challenge them to solve a different problem at the end of our core units. This is called an application phenomenon. So let's take, for instance, our anchoring phenomena here. Students diagnose our patient, they figure out her medical condition, and learned all about how cells function and systems work together. We're going to extend their thinking and at the end of the unit, in the last chapter, students will have the application phenomenon introduced to them. In this case, they meet an athlete who went from 35th place in cycling to first in a year. How did he increase his cellular respiration to make that performance jump? Students will prepare for a science seminar. We provide strategies for teachers to step back and let students explore this more independently. The resources provided for students will allow them to do the research on his diet, high altitude training, and then they prepare for their oral arguments. The beautiful thing about the seminar, it allows students to express their understanding through this performance task. Now let's talk about the exceptional program components that you get to use to teach Amplify Science. Teacher materials include a print and digital teacher guide so you can plan the way that you like. The teacher guide also has all the lesson supports available for you in Spanish. I mentioned our classroom slides and also we provide all the classroom wall materials in both languages on heavy cardstock. Student materials could be the student investigation notebooks that include the print articles, the digital experience, which also includes our videos, our hands-on material kits, as well as our digital simulations. Our hands-on material kits provide consistent hands-on learning opportunities organized in unit-specific tubs. Each unit would have its own tub full of materials designed for a class size of 40 students up to five periods a day. Those students would work in groups of two or four with these materials. Our most powerful resource is our classroom slides, available in both PowerPoint and Google version. You can fully edit them, they're available in Spanish, and teachers love to customize both versions, but they are a true clickable lesson plan. Slides include videos, images of the text, as well as those built-in on-the-fly assessments at point of use. Every lesson has an instructional video taught by a real science teacher. These are great for our special ed students and English language learners, as well as teachers using to model or assign to absent students or even use for our substitute teachers. Hands-on investigation videos provide authentic discovery as the students in the video will share the data they're collecting, but allow the, the viewers to conduct their own reasoning and make their own inferences. All of these components work together to allow a fundamental shift where students figure out, not just learn about, the science behind the phenomenon. Planning is as easy as one, two, three. One, review the lesson brief, either print or digital. Two, get your materials out of the kit. And three, access those classroom slides, either as PowerPoint or Google. As I prepare for this lesson, I'll see the majority of our lessons start with a warm up. This lesson includes a do phase with a hands on activity, a short reading and writing assignment about cellular respiration, visualization within the simulation, and then a student to student discussion for the talk phase. Now let's look at how I prepare digitally. Here I am in my metabolism unit. I can see it's organized by chapters, and I'm gonna jump into lesson 3.2 to start my preparation. Here I can see the different activities that I outlined before. So here are my classroom slides in both PowerPoint and Google version. I'll make sure to get those ready. And then my materials and preparation will take me down to all the hands-on resources I need to get out of my, my unit tub. Then I definitely wanna check out the differentiation brief. This allows me to support all the different learners within my classroom. And now I'm ready to teach. Students will complete their warm up activity. They're going to jump right into that hands on investigation with that wow factor as they collect evidence from that mo model of gas in a bag. Students will complete their work with their interactive text. They'll also engage with the simulation to collect more evidence about cellular respiration and then reflect upon their learning with a student to student discussion. This lesson with all the others in the unit helps students explain why Elisa felt tired and they're going to showcase their work as you see here. I like to finish this video by reading this tweet. During open house tonight, one of my struggling sixth graders spent about 10 minutes in front of the metabolism simulator explaining how he's used the Amplify metabolism simulation and what each part of the metabolism means and how to tell if the body is healthy or not. He spoke just like a scientist, and this is why I teach. And this is why you should choose Amplify Science.